Hey guys, I've been seeing a lot of questions lately on Facebook on the LiveScope group page about powering live scopes on a battery separate from the cranking battery or one of the accessory batteries in a, in a boat or a kayak or something like that. One of the solutions that everybody has for that is a power box and there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Um, you can get a box of Bass Pro Shields or Cabela's or something like that that's already pre-wired. And I've seen those range anywhere from $50 to over $100 depending on how much um, detail they have on them and how many different accessories on them. What I'm going to do today is show you how to build a box for right around probably $20 to $30 depending on how, how fancy you want to make it. The one we're going to build today is going to be about $30. And I think it's very simple and I think with this video you'll be able to wire it and save yourself some money for more fun things like fishing tackle. So before we get into all the tools and different things that you need to, to do this project, I'm just going to show you a real quick sample of a box and um, it's a good example of what we're going to build, build today. So it just has a simple on off power switch on the top. I like to use illuminated ones so if you're using it at night you know when the power's on there's no... Uh, no guesswork there. So we're just going to put a simple switch in it. We're going to put a port in the front and this is going to serve two purposes. It's going to serve as our connection for our battery charger so we can just plug that in and charge and it'll also serve as the power for our live scope and our Garmin head unit. So we'll wire that into here and then those will plug into the plug into the port. On the inside you can see it's pretty straightforward. We just have our switch up on the top and it has three positions and the reason it has three positions is there's a negative a power for the light and then the switched power for the units that just runs down to the port and to our battery so it's really simple you can see inside it's uh it's going to be really simple for us to wire up so now that we've kind of have an overview of the finished product we'll go ahead and get into the components and parts you're going to need to finish this project Okay, so the materials you're going to need to do this, we'll go through that first. You're obviously going to need some, some red wire, some black wire for your negative. And then we're going to, these are called the SAE plugs. And this is the plug that we're going to put in the box itself. Okay, and that's where we're going to connect our charger into. And we're going to connect our electronics into that as well. And then we need the male version of that. And this end, I have butt connectors on it. You'll see I put those on there already. That's where we'll put the negative and positive of our electronics into the end of this. And then that's where we'll plug that into the box to get the power from the battery. Then we need one or two little piggyback connectors. And those are for hooking up so that we can hook onto the battery. But what that little piggyback does is it lets you add a second wire on there. So we can put two connections onto one terminal on the battery. Then we'll need a few connectors here. These are just spade connectors and those will go onto this piggyback. So they fit onto that like so. So those will go onto there and that's, that's what those are. Okay. And we'll get into more detail on that stuff. I just want to show you the parts right now. And then we need a 12 volt illuminated switch. So it's got a light on it. Again, I like putting a power light on there so you know when the power is on. And then we'll need a four very short screws. And those we'll use to connect just to fasten this connector to the box. So that'll go on the box. And then we'll use those four screws to secure that. And then I always like to have just a few wire ties around and those so that we can kind of tame the wires inside or organize the wires a little bit inside. And we'll use these to, uh, to do that. Now, the tools that you're gonna need, real basic powered, you know, a cordless drill uh, because we gotta drill a few holes. And then what I like to use is uh, a step bit because we've gotta drill holes up to a half inch for the SAE connector and for the switch. So we'll use a, a step bit and then I just have a real small bit out here. Those are to the drill the pilot holes just to guide the screws in. So that, a wire cutter, crimper, and this we'll use for the 
for the small crimping pieces that I showed you earlier. And just a flathead screw for screwdriver for the screws that we're going to fasten the connector on the box. If you happen to grab short screws that are Phillips, then you'll need a Phillips screwdriver. And that's the tools and the components that we need for the, for the project. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to take our switch and we've got to get a, drill a hole into the box for that and for our connector, our SAE connector plug. I know that this takes a three quarter inch hole and this takes about just a little bit less than that, about 13 16 inch hole. And this step bit we have is perfect for that because the switch will go all the way to one step left and then the, for the SAE will just go all the way through. So, so we're just going to take a sharpie and lay these out on the front of the box. And we're just going to put the switch and the SAE right on the front. We're going to put the switch right there. And what we're going to do is go ahead and drill the hole for that. And we'll get the switch in the hole so that we know where to place this. So we don't run into clearance issues. You guys are going to see why I like step bits so much. Instead of uh, starting with a smaller bit, switch and go into a bigger bit. This one just steps right down through why it's called a step bit. So we're just going to slowly get started here. That's how we get through. Now you'll see, and this bit's just going to step as we go down. You see how nice and easy that is to drill a really nice round hole. This is not have to have, but it's, I'd recommend it. It's just a clear silicone and we'll just put that around the hole a little bit and helps uh, seal the box with from water around where we drill these holes. So we're just going to put a bead of that around where we're, where we're going to put the switch and then we'll pop the switch in. All right, so what we're gonna do, I like to take this switch and when it's up, that's the on. So we're gonna put the light up because that's the on position. So we're just gonna take this. This is kind of a cool little switch. It just snaps to fit. So we're gonna drop that in and we'll just, you'll hear it pop in and it's in. Now we'll take our white, just clean up that silicone around there. All right, so we got the switch installed. So we got that there. Pretty easy right it doesn't get much easier than that so now we're gonna take our sharpie and we're gonna line up decide where we can put this the main reason again I put that switch in is, is so that we didn't run into a problem where I drilled the holes too close and this was interfering so I just kind of lay that on its side because we can't put it this way so we'll just lay it on the side and kind of eye up the center of where we need to put the hole and again all I'm doing here is making sure that I'm clearing this switch. So I'm going to drop that down and then the center is about right here so we'll just eyeball that and we'll double check to make sure that's going to clear and it's going to clear just fine right there so it's going to clear the switch and we'll go ahead and get our hole drilled for that. All right, so that one, like I said, that was easy with that step bit because we just went all the way through, so we just dropped it down. Again, step bit's a little bit more expensive, but man, do they make your life easy if you gotta drill a circular hole. So we'll go ahead and get some silicone around that, and we'll drop in our plug. All right, so now we're gonna feed our wires in. So we'll feed those through. We'll drop that in. Now you can decide if you want the cap to open up or down. I'm going to have it open up so that it will stay down better. So we'll go ahead and drop that in. Get that in, the, in there. And lined up, center. Now this is where we're going to use that little bit because Obviously, you can see that's not going to stay down by itself. That's where we're going to use those little screws I showed you to, to hold this down. So we're going to take that step bit out 
we'll just put in this little, just a small bit. This is just a starter bit to help line up the holes. So what we're gonna do, line that up. Square it up so it looks decent. And then we'll carefully drop our hole our bit here for our starter holes. And then what I like to do is go ahead and take one and go ahead and get it in there. And that'll hold the unit, hold that connector in there while we while we uh, put the other th three screws in. So we'll go ahead and pop that in there. And you don't have to go crazy on this. Just get it tight. And then you can rotate it a little bit, make sure it's square. We'll go ahead and put the other three screws in quick. Okay, we got the fastener in there, we got that tightened down, so the cap will go on and we got our switch right above it. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to go inside the box and we have these two connectors and we are going to drop a battery in here. We'll talk about the batteries when we kind of do the recap at the end. This particular battery we're going to put in and you'll see that it's got the two spade connectors on the top and that's why we talked about needing those uh, one connectors. So we're going to go ahead and drop that in the box and get that in there. And then we'll measure up our other wires, our red wire and our black wire. What we're going to do is, is this wire right here is going to go right to the positive on the battery, or on, on the switch, one of the poles on the switch. We'll have another positive coming off of the battery going to the switch, and this negative, I already put one of the piggyback connectors on there, that's going to go on our negative. And then you'll see what we do with the other negative wire it has to go to the switch, and that way we get that light to light up on there. So let's go ahead and put the negative on the battery and we'll put this positive on the switch. We really don't need to worry about that right now. What we need to measure right now is we need to get a piece of negative wire that we can run from this piggyback over to the switch and we'll go ahead and get that cut. And then we need a positive, we need a positive to go from the positive of the battery to the switch. So we'll just kind of measure that up. All right, now what we need to do is we need to put our connectors on the wire. We're just gonna go ahead and strip about a quarter of an inch of insulation off of that wire. And then we're gonna slip one of our spade connectors on there. And we'll just put, push that on and we'll give it a good good squeeze. You wanna give it a good, good pinch to crimp that. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that on this end and both ends of the positive wire. So we've got our negative coming from the SAE plug. That's the black wire here with our piggyback on it. We made our little negative jumper. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that, go ahead and put that on the piggyback. All right. But we're going to go ahead and put that on the negative pole of the switch. On this particular switch, it's a copper colored connector and it's on the bottom. We've got two connectors left on the switch and those are for our positives. The center one is for our load and that is where the battery charger is going to go and where our electronics are going to go. And that one goes in the center. So we're going to go ahead and put that on. Okay. And then we're going to take the positive jumper that we made and put our two connectors on. One of those goes on the positive of the battery and the other one goes on the other last spade on our switch. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and pop that on. We got that on there. And then the negative goes to the negative on the battery. All right. And now when we flip our switch on the front, you're going to see it light up. And that means we have power to the port. Guys, it's that simple. I mean, that's how easy it is to make your own power box. All right. Um, so you can close that up now. 
you've got yourself a nice little portable case with a switch and the power. And then like I said, what you're going to do is you're going to take the positive leads from your live scope box or your black box, depending, you might be using Lowrance or Humminbird, you can use their black box as well. You go ahead and put your positive in here as well as the positive for your display. In my, map, in my case, it'd be the Echo Map 106. So both those positives go in here, both their negatives go in here, crimp that down, and now you have this connector on your electronics in your kayak, boat, ice shack, canoe, whatever you're doing. You go hop in the boat, you take that connector from your electronics, hop up your SAE port, pop that in there, and voila, you've got power. So the cool part is, is you have your electronics in your SAE port. When you're done for the day, you unplug it, and then, especially if you use an amped outdoors charger, it has the SAE, the same exact plug on it. You go ahead and plug that in. Plug your charger into the wall and charge your battery up. The way we wired this, you're gonna to have to have the switch on when you're charging and when you're using your electronics. But once it's charged and it's sitting in between when you go fishing next time, just turn it off and you're all set. It's that simple, guys. We're gonna put a schematic in the video so that you can see the wiring a little bit better. And again, we'll link all the stuff on the bottom of the video so that you can see where we got it. Most of the stuff I bought on Amazon. So, all right, guys, I think, you can tell, and if you take some time and, and watch the video and look at the schematic we have in there, this is really easy to build, and it's going to take a lot of stress off of your other batteries in your boat. I selected this particular battery from Amped Outdoors. It's a 14.8 volt, and it, actually it operates up to 16 volts. The cool thing about this is it's 32 amp hours. This particular battery will run my 10-inch Garmin Echo Map and my live scope for up to 13 hours. You can go smaller if you have a smaller screen. You can go with something like the six amp hour. I don't know exactly how long this one runs. It's a 12.8 volt battery. But the cool part about Amped Outdoors is if you go there, they have a complete listing and a chart that you can show what you have for a live box and what you have for a display. And it'll tell you the, all the batteries, how long they'll run those. So. Anyhow, just wanted to put a little bit in there about the batteries. The last thing I wanted to mention is the limitless customization you can do to these boxes. And as you get more comfortable with the wiring, you can add lots of things to them. You can add USB charging ports, which is nice for like your phone or a GoPro or that type of stuff. So you can add that in there pretty easily. You can add spade connectors on the top. And these are just... You can alligator clip just about anything to this. Lights, LED, you know, small LED lights if you want to put them in your kayak and all that type of stuff. There's just a limitless options you can put on it. This is a box that I've made and I use this for, I use this particular box in my kayak and for ice fishing. It's got a 12 volt cigarette lighter that I put in it. Um, it has USB and a voltage gauge built together. So that shows you the, what the voltage of the battery is, plus it has two USBs in it. And then I also have the two spade connectors. The cool thing about this box is these are switched. These are constantly hot. So I don't have to have the whole box on if I want to run LED lights or something off of this. So again, just, a, just all kinds of options. You'll see that it, it's a little bit more wiring is involved in here, but it's really not that complicated and you'll see in this one that's where the wire ties came in we use those to organize the wires a little bit so they're not all over the place and then i just had some just to show you real quick i had some extra foam laying around and i just put that in there to wedge the battery in so it doesn't bounce around but that's a little bit more advanced box but again once you get used to how the voltage runs with the positive and negative that it's limitless what you can do i've seen speakers in these boxes but again, this is a great starting point and does exactly what you need to run your light box and your display. So until next time, guys, good luck, tight lines, have fun fishing.